Hello again everyone in this technical analysis of the stock market video. This week we're going to focus on the NASDAQ composite and I'm also going to show the NASDAQ 100. I've got an interesting uh, statistic about that or stat about it I guess. I call the video pulling the rubber band because we're getting pretty stretched in one direction just like we got pretty stretched in the you know in the opposite direction in the bearish direction in March. We're getting stretched in the bullish direction. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. But let's dive in. What we've got on the screen is a monthly view. This is all the data I've got on the NASDAQ composite all the way back to February 1971. Okay, so right now I think this is the big cycle waves. I think this is what's going on. We had this big extended cycle wave one. We had this cycle wave two pullback that ended in 2009. You know, the big crash that occurred in the in the NASDAQ uh, starting in 2000 came back down and bottomed in 2002. And then we had this real strong move since March of 2009. Now, I think we've had five waves up in here. So what does that mean? That means we're going to get a corrective activity. But are we at the end yet? I don't quite think so, but I think we're getting close. So here's the wave structure, the way I've got it labeled, primary waves. We zoom in a little bit. We're kind of focusing on this last uh, cycle wave three up here. And again, I don't think the fifth wave is done, but we're getting there. Let's uh, let's dive in and take a look at the weekly chart. OK, here's the weekly view of that chart. We, so we're just drilling down uh, one level down from monthly down to weekly. Look how the channeling, how the, the NASDAQ composite really was channeling very nicely throughout all, almost all of that move of the last, uh, what, 11 years or so. And then we got this big flat in here, and it's really best labeled as a, uh, a running flat. It's a running flat because the B wave came beyond the beginning of the A wave, and then the C wave came up short of the A wave. If it would have gone past the A wave, it would be an extended flat. But right now, this is the best take. And it's really interesting to me when I look at this. Let me give you a little more detail in here. Here's the minute waves in here within the intermediate waves. This is intermediate wave four. OK, so intermediate wave three, I've got labeled here uh, at that August 2018 high. And then we had these big swings, the, the big move to the upside here in February 2020. And then this move down here in wave C uh, in, in March. Now, it went well below the channel. It became very extreme. It's like we pulled the rubber band, you know, way down here to this stream. And now the rubber band's snapping back. And it's going to the opposite extreme at the other end of the channel. So, I mean, visually, I mean, it's just the way it looks, the way it feels. It just fits. And, you know, you can just tell about the extreme of the move because in terms of the corrective action down here, the RSI being oversold, we never had anything like that the entire previous 11 years. I mean, you got to go back to the 2008 period to get anything like what we just had right now. So we'll see where we go and how much further we got. Now, when I look at the wave structure in here, let's look at wave three and compare it to wave one. Intermediate wave three compared to wave one, you know it's extended. Percentage wise, you know, I'm keeping this on semi log because of the uh, the uh, the magnitude of the numbers. OK, whenever it's three to one or greater, I move into semi log for measurement and for graphical purposes, pictorial purposes. So right now you can clearly see that wave three has gone very nearly 200 percent of the move of wave one. OK, and it's measuring this in terms of the actual math and saying, OK, you know, how does that work? Well, that's an extended wave three. I actually didn't need to do that to be able to see that it was extended, but I just wanted to show you what I'm measuring. So given that I have an extended wave three, my then my, my thinking is then to say, well, OK, where could wave five be? And so uh, one of the uh, Elliott wave guidelines is that many times two of the th three motive waves, like one, three, and five, two of the three will to have a tendency towards equality. So if that's the case, let's look and see where does wave five equal wave one? Well, right here at 13,285. Where did we close on Friday? 11,695. So 
that being the case, I mean, we've got th this would project and I'm not I'm just giving you my analysis. Uh, there is no guarantee by any means that it's going to go to 13,285. But if it were to keep pushing and keep doing the wave counting here as we've got it, you know, it could very easily push up here and have uh, be equal to wave one uh, and uh, at 100 percent here at 13,285. So let's drill down and take a look at the daily view. OK, so let me slide this over and you could see for this last week, I mean, it was up 383 points in here. It's kind of blending in 383.3. I mean, just tremendous moves that continues to push. And when you look over here on the daily chart, the channeling that's been going on in this last move, this intermediate wave five is just incredible. And, you know, yeah, I have a wave count. I'm not going to go into it right now for on the daily view. But I thought this was very, um, you know, interesting to be able to see the kind of channeling that's occurring right here also. Now I want to show you an interesting uh, tweet that I came across related to the NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100. OK, so this guy in DC, he's a follower of the market. He has this quote in here by George Soros. But what he's talking about here is on the NASDAQ 100, he's looking at levels, and I think he meant to say envy or uh, even. The NASDAQ 100 monthly price series has now surpassed even levels last visited in Q1 2000. And he's showing you percentages of uh, how far above the upper band of the Bollinger Bands uh, the price of the NDX has gotten. And so it was like 13% back here in Q1 of 2000, and it just reached like 15%. Now, I haven't gone back and uh, validated those numbers, but I thought, well, let's just pull up the chart and take a look. So you can see how far above the, the uh, Bollinger Bands. Now, I've got this set at two standard deviations on a 20-bar moving average, kind of a standard default for the Bollinger Bands. This is a monthly chart of the NASDAQ 100. And you can see you know, how we've become stretched above the top of the Bollinger Band. It really hasn't gone to this degree in a long time. OK, just keep looking back. Got a little bit here. When was that? That was October of 2007, the high of the market in October of 2007. And then you go back and then here's where he's talking about Q1 of 2000. OK, so that is his tweet. I thought it was kind of interesting. And again, I think it just kind of pictorially represents the kind of stretching of the rubber band that we're seeing right now. OK, now I want to give you a little update on the put to call ratios. Let's look at what we got here. Here's what happened on Friday. 42 puts for every 100 calls and the 10 day moving averages at 0.43. That is back to the extreme that we saw in July 21st. And I know I've mentioned this before, but my gosh, this kind of extreme bullishness, I dark, I very dark red when it's below 50 in terms of a 10 day moving average. And we're talking about equity put to calls from the CBOE. OK, it had a huge sequence back here in July. We had it in June. Here's that June 8th where we got that very low reading. OK, and then when you go back up to the top, I mean, this is all we had in January prior to the February peak. And now the kind of optimism that we're getting right now is just incredible. You know, it's uh, I, I'm just I have data back to 2006 and I know I've checked some readings back into 2000, uh, but just haven't seen this kind of uh, extreme readings uh, with all the data that I have. So that is one perspective. And I know we're seeing this on a lot of other readings. All right, uh, let's take a look at Apple. OK, Apple is splitting uh, four for one. Yeah, it's four for one on Monday. I think Tesla is splitting on Monday also, or it's, the actual adjustment is occurring on Monday. And so I talked about Tesla last week and how, you know, what I thought the Elliott Wave analysis of its price action and chart was. Well, this is the long term picture. Let's take a quick look. This is a weekly view of Apple uh, all the way back here into 1997. Um, and actually, this low is the same as this low, almost literally to the penny, which is interesting. 
And, and so I've got this labeled as cycle wave one, two, three, four, and you'll notice the deep corrections that occurred, the deep oversold uh, type of occurrences in these corrective waves. And then I'm just, you know, I struggled with this fifth wave and I just don't think that it's done. Um, this is a little bit of a tweak uh, that I showed my members and I'm gonna adjust this. I'll put this in the chart library for the members on Monday or this weekend. But I had the members, I thought the primary wave maybe ended here and now because of this deep oversold here. But I, now I think it better counts as uh, primary wave three ending right now uh, in terms of the price action we're seeing. Here's the divergence that we're seeing at the top at the end of wave three. Um, and let me just get a little more detail. So let's focus in on this section right here. Um, let's drill in here like this. This is what I think is going on in this third primary wave. I think we have uh, three interme or five intermediate waves, and I think this fifth intermediate wave is an ending, expanding ending diagonal pattern. Very interesting. You notice how the fifth wave is um, overshooting the top part of the triangle. I think when this corrects, we're going to come all the way back down into the previous fourth wave right down here, and it's rapidly going to correct all of this. Now, you know, this isn't this isn't unusual to get that kind of a move and that kind of correction. Uh, you know, back in 2012, I mean, look at the correction that occurred here from 100 all the way back down to 55 price wise. OK, you know, almost cut in half in terms of the move. So watching to see, I mean, if this comes back down into this level, what is this zone? 233 to 14, let's just say 233 to 150 zone. OK, we'll see it one, one wave, one week at a time. We'll see what happens here uh, as we start off the new uh, era after the split occurring here this coming uh, Monday. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it the thumbs up. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like to have more of this kind of information on a daily basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership over there. Everyone, have a great weekend. Be safe.